Someone has left a note for you on the chest. You have no idea how they could have put it there without awakening you. The note says, Meet me at the castle gates tonight. We have much to talk about. Katrina. Nothing like a good breakfast to get you off to a good start in the morning, especially when everything's laced with garlic. Valtonia was away from us. She learned to read and write. Uh -huh. Now she is teaching me to read. I have always wanted to learn how to read. Together, Tanya and I will teach all the women of the town to read and write. Why would a woman need to read or write? That is like teaching a horse to dance! Yuri, you and I will have a talk later. Tonight, in fact. Why, I couldn't be happier! My baby is back and everyone is well here! I don't know much about that, but it's supposed to be bad luck to speak of it. Tui, tui! It was supposed to have something to do with a, with an old monastery and a dark cult that worshipped it. Tui. And that it had something to do with uh, Irana's death, and rumors that say it is the cause of all the problems here in Mordavia. Other than that, <laughs> I can't tell you anything. She is well. She helps her mother during the day, and we make certain she is safe at night. No one will ever steal her from us again. I am well and very happy. We do not dare to speak of the uh, Dark One, for that way lies madness and despair. I'm sorry I, I cannot help you. You have done much to help Mordavia, and we have much to thank you for. You get a wave and a smile in response. You do not need to go looking for trouble. It will always find you. Please, take care. There's only a certain amount of punishment your body can stand on any given day. Enough pain, enough gain for now. Try again tomorrow. After some rest, you feel better. After some rest, you feel better. You are always on the go, my friend. Take care. Your magical lasso floats towards the tree and plucks a single ripe fruit from its branches. 
Welcome, welcome. What next will this handsome Giorgio ask of us? What more do you need to know that only the gypsies can tell? Welcome again, and always. I am concerned about you. You fill my dreams. Please, be very careful. I keep having dreams about being chased by something. In the dream, I know I am going to be caught, but still I run and run. Bah, I hate such dreams. If it were real, I would turn and face my attackers. I would meet my death with teeth. A wolf dies fighting. I still kill in my death hunt. When a gypsy gets past a certain age, she goes on a death hunt. She chooses her prey as to her rank in the tribe. The tougher the prey, the higher the rank. I chose a necrotar. Mine was a wyvern. We celebrate in song and dance before the hunt, knowing we may not see the hunter again. She must hunt and kill the prey in whatever way she can, or else die trying. That is the way of the gypsy wolf, to hunt until death. It is not wise to speak of such things. To do so is to call attention to ourselves. Nonetheless, the Dark One now knows you, so it is only right that you come to know the Dark One as well. I will learn what I can about the Dark One. We have avoided the subject so long, we too are ignorant. Perhaps upon your next return, we will have the information you need. <laughs> I am happy. My mate, my love, is now bearing our child. I am also very worried. It is a dangerous time for a family, and a much more dangerous place. Magda tried to read the future of our child-to-be, but it was as though she was blind. The future of us all has become increasingly difficult to see. You say goodbye. Farewell. May your dangers be ever far from your feet.
After some rest, you feel better. 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 You hear movement on the other side of the door. After a few minutes, you hear someone removing the bar and unlocking the bolts on the other side of the door. Everyone cheers at you in greeting. Tonight, for your dining pleasure, it is the traditional Moldavian chicken paprikash, delicately seasoned with locally grown paprika and garlic. Gotta tell you, there's many monsters out there roaming the night in Mordavia. Yeah. Many an eldritch creature crawls out of the dark. I know most of them. It's a good thing we stay safe within the town walls and doors so we don't have to... meet them. All right, fine, so sue me. Maybe we do gossip once in a while. Well, you must be my apartment. We know of no cave in Mordavia. Point is, we never repeat gossip. As we get it right the first time. Actually, this quote-unquote gossip is about you. Yeah, he's right, okay? Someone overheard Tanya playing where the staff used to be. She was singing Trina's in love. Trina loves a human. Trina's in love. Kind of a good beaten. And, uh, since you're the only alleged human having any dealings with that particular vampire... We thought you just might be interested in that story before we go to the Inquirer! You know, you can never tell about some people. Unless, of course, you're a gossip. Well, sport fans, things are pretty quiet around here. Yuri and Bella are happy that Tanya's back. Yeah, they're okay, you know? Even he goes back to his old self. <laughs> we even speak to him occasionally now. There's even a rumor going around that Boris and Olga may be getting together again. On the other hand, there are vampires in the castle. Yeah, and it's rough, are you kidding? I mean, that swamp still cuts us off from the rest of the world. Yeah, and the dark, uh, 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 the cave still darkly influences everything that goes on here in sleepy Mordavia. So, uh, we were a skosh curious about you. Yeah, I mean, you're okay, but when are you gonna get around to taking care of all the rest of our problems? After all, you're supposed to be the hero around here. You start to tell them of your plans and the dangers you face. <laughs> Color me crazy, but uh, maybe it's better we don't know all the details. Yeah, you know, I think we'll sleep better if we don't. Yeah, what we don't know won't give us nightmares. One dark day... Uh... Large, fragrant stranger came to town. Oh, I remember. He was dressed in dark clothes, and he wore a hood over his head, so we couldn't quite see his face. I thought it was Tony Fields. He spoke in a deep, sibilant voice, reminiscent of Vincent Price, and had a cruel chuckle. 
moseyed on up to each and every elephant in Mordavia and whispered a little something in its ear. Yeah, and by the next day, all the elephants had left town. I just can't bear this. You gotta tell it. After that, only the stranger was left in town. I ran up to him. I asked him, what have you done? What did you say to the elephants? My wife left me! Then he, he just threw off his clothes and cape, exposing himself to the whole world and revealed that he was an elephant. Yeah, he said. Ha ha, you fools. I am an elephant. Then he just packed up his trunk and left forever. But to this day, on dark, cold nights, you can still hear the distant echoes of elephants trumpeting their mournful cries. My wife, how I miss her. And I call out, you forgot to write. Not even a fax. The elephants don't listen and they never remember. You are overwhelmed by the friendly voices saying farewell to you. You've never seen so many locks and bars on a door. You can't find any way to open it. It is very dangerous in Mardavia at night. We always keep things locked up when it gets dark. I will let you out for now. If you wish to return later this evening, just knock on the door. If you do not make it back by the closing of the inn, may you rest in peace. After some rest, you feel better. How nice of you to come. I'm afraid I accidentally signed the wrong name to your note. It's been ages since we last met. Come here and let me look at you. You tell Adavis that you've killed him once and you'll just have to kill him again. Good luck, monkey boy. You see, I'm already dead. Your feeble attacks mean nothing to me in my present form. You ask Ad Avis how it is that he is still alive after hurtling to a fiery doom in Rasir. Alive? You think I'm alive? You simple-minded fool! I am greater now than I ever was in life as you shall have a very short time to learn before your own death. You ask Adavis about the letter you received from Katrina. Oh? Have you been receiving letters from little Katrina? Other than the one I sent in her name, that is. <laughs> you have no power against one such as I. Let's play a little game of fox and hound, shall we? I have summoned the hounds of death. Now we shall see whether you've kept up with your running lessons. Run, fool! Run while you can! Soon enough, my creatures shall catch you, and then I shall have my revenge. You're too busy to cast a spell right now. You fool! Did you really believe you could get away from me? I have you now, and you will pay for my death. It is you that caused me to become a vampire. If you had not killed me, I would never be forced to serve the Dark Master again. You probably blame me for all the problems around here, don't you? You understand nothing. The Dark Master is the cause of all the woe that is here. 
the Dark Master brought you here against my better judgment. The Dark Master made me what I am now, a Nosferatu, and seeks to do the same to you. But I shall spare you that fate. I will mercifully end your miserable existence. Then, the Dark Master and I will call forth eternal darkness, and we will no longer be limited to travel at night. Together, my Master and I will create an army of undead, and we will conquer the world! Pity you won't be there to witness this. You cannot stop us now. You will never find your way out of this dungeon, and only a stake through the heart or more magic than you will ever have can stop us. You will die, knowing that you were destroyed by the Dark Master. Ah, the sun now rises and I must go to my rest. You too shall rest. I will not allow you the chance to escape your fate, or to use that stake and hammer I torment you with here. <laughs> Weapons of my destruction so close at hand, and yet so far. Sleep now, great hero. Tomorrow, we die. You find yourself falling asleep. You wake up from what you thought was a nightmare, only to discover that it's only too real. You are in a gloomy, foul-smelling room filled with instruments of torture and death. You find yourself chained to the platform by your feet. You open the lock on the chains easily. It seems your foe has underestimated you once again. It does seem odd, though, that he didn't bother to remove your backpack. It's a heavy iron hammer. You pick up the heavy hammer and store it in your pack. It's a stout stake of the oaken variety. You take the wooden stake and stake its claim in your pack. It's definitely a skeleton, make no bones about it. It's a huge saw. Ideal for sectioning trees or prisoners? It's a head-sized chopping block. It's not clear whether the cages are designed to hold prisoners or hungry monsters. Maybe both are put in at the same time. The heavily barred and reinforced door leads out to one of the castle stairways. You hear the sound of voices on the other side of the door. It's barred on the other side, but you can see and hear the two guards through a peephole in the door. What's going on in there? The master didn't say nothing about guarding no prisoner. It's the enemy guy's orders. So what? He gives us something to do. I don't like it. I think Adaby's guy's trying to pull a fast one on the master. She's not gonna like this. You wants to go down there and tell her? No way. Then shut up! You're in a gloomy, foul-smelling room filled with instruments of torture and death. It's an Iron Maiden, a popular torture and murder device. The inside bristles with sharp iron spikes. Unlike most things here, it is shiny and has no rust forming upon it. Now that you look closely, there does seem to be something a bit odd about the design of the Iron Maiden. We take a deep breath and step inside. You are in a lady's richly decorated bedroom. The coffin, where there should be a bed, seems a bit out of place, but there's no accounting for tastes. Only shards remain of the mirror. It 
appears to have been shattered by a single violent blow. In contrast to the lushness of the other furnishings in this room, the plain desk and chair are obviously functional and frequently used. Sculptures are so realistic they almost seem alive and hungry. Where a bed would normally be is a closed coffin. It is an ornate affair, apparently custom designed for someone who expected to be in and out of it frequently. Suddenly you find yourself totally unable to move. You! What are you? How dare you! Try to kill me, will you? How dare you! You break into my home, steal away my child, kill my servant, Toby, and then return to kill me? After I befriended you and helped you, some hero you are. I should leave you here to rot. I should let the rats gnaw your bones while you hang there. Give me one reason, one excuse why I should not leave you here to die. I tell how you returned the child to her parents and how happy she is now. I loved her. I gave her everything she ever wanted. Toys, Toby to talk and play with. She was no longer afraid of the night. She was happy here. Tell Katrina that Tanya is happy now. <laughs> you think it was wrong of me to take her from her parents? They ignored her. They never gave her anything. I gave her everything. You remind Katrina that she did kill Tanya. Killed her? I lifted her to a new life. One where she would not have to fear growing old and ugly. One where she would never have to die again. You were the one who killed her! The return to, to fear and, and age and, and to face death again. I... I loved her. And she loved me. Try to explain what you're doing in Katrina's bedroom. Trying to find an exit from the dungeon? Just couldn't pass up a chance to look at the helpless vampire, could you? Funny place to look for an escape route, wasn't it? I have decided that I still have a use for you. Alive. If you help me, you may still manage to leave Mordavia without my mark upon you. I want you to seek out the five missing Dark One rituals and return to the castle. Together we will summon the Dark One and bring eternal night to this land. You will help me, won't you? Or must I take more drastic measures to assure your obedience? You tell Katrina that you'll do anything, anything at all, if she'll just let you go and not rip your throat out. Very well. But because I can never completely trust you, I will make certain you carry out my bidding. By my will, I guess thee. Thou shalt seek the heart ritual of the Dark One. Thou shalt seek the blood ritual of the Dark One. Thou shalt seek the breath ritual of the Dark One. Thou shalt seek the bone ritual of the Dark One. Thou shalt seek the sense ritual of the Dark One. Return with these rituals ere three nights pass, lest ye suffer. Thus is your gear. So go and return with the ritual soon. I would not want you to suffer after all. <laughs>
what a good boy you are. You would never do anything to hurt me, would you? Unlike some others I could name. So, you have returned with the rituals. Good. Very good. We will journey at once to the Dark One's cave. Soon, it will be forever night and I shall never be at anyone's mercy again. Ya Avuzel, hear me, great Dark One. Open thy mouth that we may enter. Open thy mouth that will swallow us all. Open thy mouth of darkness, Ya Avuzel. We will be watching you, so do not even think of trying to betray us. The last ritual remains with the High Priest. You will need to take it before you begin the other rituals. Please, be careful. Yes, we would hate for anything unpleasant to happen to you. Enter now, and good luck. <laughs>